Hey, welcome back to my channel. This series is called Watercolor Odyssey, and I'm going to be painting the goosening part two. Part one is on my TikTok. Don't worry, you didn't miss anything. I'm just going to repaint the whole thing in different colors and in either real time or double time here. The geese visit Colorado every year in the winter, and they're either honking at each other or chasing each other. They're really fun to watch, not fun to approach, so I thought it would be neat to paint them in their environment and with the shadows that they cast. I really liked those, so that's what I'm trying to capture here. And I used Frisket to mask off the white parts of the goose that I don't want to accidentally paint over with this first wash here. In this video, I just want to show how to use Frisket in a non-intrusive way just to preserve those highlights rather than giant pieces of what's going to look like a puzzle at the end. I want it to kind of enhance the painting rather than it be the main feature of what I'm trying to show. There are a couple of common problems with using Frisket, and so if you've run into these, I want to offer a solution. So the first thing is it can remove pigment that you've already painted. And I believe, and this is through experimentation, that that comes from non-staining paints. If it's got like a heavy sediment quality to it, the Frisket can lift it off the page. I have, <laughs> I have found this out the hard way. In fact, I found out most of these things the hard way. So let's see. Big patches of frisket can actually warp the paper. And that's not fun. I have, sometimes I'll have a puddle in the middle of my painting. Nothing seems to work out after that. And then it looks like a cut out puzzle piece. So try not to use it in very large areas. It's better to use... Uh, freezer tape or masking tape. I don't really like masking tape. I do enjoy freezer tape because it's very tacky and it doesn't rip my paper. Every time I use masking tape, it rips it. Let's see. The other one is hair dryer. So using a hair dryer when you have frisket that's already on the painting can actually stain the painting. So if you're using a frisket with a yellow tint or a clear tint, it could turn the white space that you're trying to preserve yellow. Um, I use that blue frisket so it turns my paper blue. That's not very fun because I want it to be white. When you go to remove frisket, it can be very difficult to get off the page. Sometimes I've used my fingers to try and get those little scraps up, but it never quite works out. There is an eraser. It's about $5. It's a rubber block that I'll show here in just a minute. And that was the best $5 I've ever spent in watercolor supplies because it removes the frisket right off. And sometimes the frisket will glob up uh, in like green patches. You can just pull those off the eraser and continue from there. The last drawback is frisket is very toxic. So just be sure to keep it away from children or pets, or if you're eating your lunch, don't use it at the same time. That's a bad idea. To dry the painting in between each wash, what I've been doing is cracking a window and just letting it sit on the windowsill in order to dry it rather than use that hair dryer because it might stain. I made sure to make long shadows for the tree and the geese because it's at the end of the day and everybody's just hanging out here in the evening. And here is that rubber thingy, the rubber eraser that I was telling you about. Look at how easy it just picks up the frisket. The geese are going to look like white blobs, not really part of the painting, so that's why I made sure to add some reddish brown details and then some darker details on top of that where the geese are naturally in shadow. This also helps with making the frisket areas not look like cutouts. It makes it look like it's an incorporated part of your painting and this is just a technique that you're using to achieve the end result of a cohesive image. 
you might notice some sparkle in the grass in the front. That was made by using a spray bottle at a distance and just letting the water mist down onto the drying wash of the grass. I used a limited palette here, even though it's not going to look like it. There's a variety of colors. So some old favorites, ultramarine blue, cobalt blue. I also used yellow ochre and gamboge to achieve that glow. Venetian red, that's one of my newer colors. And chromium green oxide. This was a Christmas present, so I'm still experimenting with the properties of this color. So we're nearing the end of the painting and I'm adding just a couple of details that I think would enhance the overall composition as well as I think geese are hilarious so I'm adding an extra goose or two. Then all I have to do is remove the frisket from the fence posts and add a touch of Venetian red in the back. The ground outside right now is covered in a huge layer of snow. We had a giant storm the other day, so I was able to capture these geese right before the storm hit and covered the ground. I'll probably try this motif again, but with snow this time. And if I do that, I won't be using frisket. I will be using lavender and a touch of either gamboge or lemon yellow to warm up where the sun is hitting the snow. So a bunch of different ways to approach this motif. A couple more drops of Venetian red here on the fence, and then it's time to peel that tape off. I love the clean edge that the freezer tape gives me. Thanks for joining me for the goosening part two. I'm gonna be painting some more scenes from around here in Colorado and my adventures either in the studio or on the field. So I'll see you again soon.